Okay, today we're going to be looking at resolving forces in horizontal and vertical directions in equilibrium problems, which is a mouthful. So we're basically going to be looking at more force problems. So let's consider a simple scenario. We've got some toy, some brick, and we've got two children. We're going to put them over here. And they both want the toy. And this child is going to pull the toy with 10 newtons. And this child is going to pull the toy with 10 newtons. What is the net force? Well, we can see that the net force is going to depend on the direction. If one child pulls in that direction and the other child pulls in that direction, the net force is going to be zero. But if the children both pull it in this direction, the net force is going to be 20. What if the child, one pulls it in this direction and the other child pulls it in that direction? That is something that's a bit more challenging and these are the kind of questions we're going to be looking at because the world doesn't pull forces in, um, that are parallel to one another either in a positive or negative direction they pull them in different directions um, so far we're going to do quite simple directions but as you can imagine in a real life situation as an object is going to have lots of forces acting on it and they could be in numerous different directions to one another so let's look at this more closely. So a force is a vector. And we can add vectors up. We can add vectors by joining them. Oops. So say we had um, some force here, F, and another force can be added onto it here, and then the resulting vector would be F plus G. Um, we can also split the um, the vector, the resultant vector of adding them together into components. Um, now if we choose, if the two vectors are perpendicular, Uh, we have a right angled triangle. Um, so you can see where we're going with this. This allows us to use um, trigonomic relationships. and Pythagoras. So let's consider some force F. We can split this force up into its com into component vectors. We can split the force acting in the um, horizontal and the vertical directions and they'll be separated by some angle theta. So from the trigonomic relationships, we have the force f of x is equal to f times the cosine of theta, and f of y 
is equal to f times the sine of theta. Um, I'm going to add a trigonomic identity in as well that is going to be really useful, which you learn in the pure mathematics course. Um, I'm actually going to add in a couple of trigonomic um, identities that you learn in the pure math mathematics course that are really important. You'll have them explained fully in the pure maths course, but um, we can use them in our mechanics. So if we have sine squared theta and we add cosine squared theta, that equals 1. And the sine of theta over the cosine of theta equals the tan of theta. So these are really useful to memorise. You'll need these memorised. And we've got our trigonomic identity as well. And of course, you can see this is right angle triangle um, that obviously fy squared plus fx squared is going to equal the force squared from our Pythagoras. Now, <coughs> components, these are not extra forces. These are just part of this force that's there already. We're just um, split them into the di different directions. <coughs> And it's important to know that in equilibrium, the net force in both perpendicular directions will be zero. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Um, so we've got a particle of mass four kilograms. It's held in place by a force of magnitude 100 newtons <clears throat> acting at an angle theta above the horizontal. and a horizontal force F. Find the values of F and theta. So here's our ball and it's got 4G newtons pulling it down. Now this is the horizontal and we've got that's a, some value theta, and this force here is a hundred newtons. Now, in the horizontal, you've also got a force acting that we don't know. So let's draw the what we know in our right angle triangle. So we've got a theta. We've got our hundred newtons here. Now, the force in the vertical down is the weight, so that's 4 g newtons. But we don't know what this force here is. So let's begin. We know for the, for the force in the vertical, and sorry, not in the vertical, yeah, in the vertical, f of y is going to be um, the force sine theta. So the force is 100, f of y is 
4G and we don't know sine theta. So that's working this out, you're going to find out theta is 23.6 degrees. Now, <coughs> for the horizontal, f of x, um, that's f times the cosine of theta. f is 100 newtons, and it's a cosine of 23.6. So that must, when you put in your calculator, you get 91.7 newtons. And f of x is this, f, that we don't know. Um, let's look at another example. Um, a boat is held in place by a force of five oops, newtons due east and a force of 10 newtons due south. And a force F newtons on a bearing of theta. Find F and theta. So here's our boat and we know that due east, so in this direction, we've got 5 newtons. Due south we've got um, 10 newtons. Now this is north I won't write N because we'll get N for north and N for newtons muddled up. Now, a bearing goes clockwise, so round here. So, we're going to have some angle coming out here. And we're going to call, so 360 minus theta is going to be this angle here. And we'll call it alpha. Um, now, we know, so let's, um, let's look at this wee triangle bit here. This is our north, this is our force that we don't know. It's a force we don't know. And so now we've now got a right angle triangle, we have a vertical and we've got a horizontal. Our vertical is 10 newtons and our horizontal is 5. So we know from before that f of x equals um, f cosine theta and f of y equals f sine theta. So from that we can find that the force that we're wanting times the cosine of alpha must equal 5. And the force that we want multiplied by the sine of alpha must equal 10. So just taking the trigonomic identities and applying it to this triangle. Now we said as well that if you take the sine of an angle over the cosine of an angle, you'll get the tan of an angle. So let's just change this around a wee bit. So the cosine of alpha must be 5 over f and the sine of alpha must be 10 over f. If we I've got these wrong way round. Um, so the co f cosine f is 10, this is a 10 one. 
and this one's 5, sorry. So therefore the cosine of alpha is 10 over f and the sine of alpha is 5 over f. Now if we slot oh, f, slot these back into this, we'll find that the tan of alpha must equal a half, therefore alpha must equal 26.6 degrees. Um, and therefore, using this up here, 360 minus alpha um, equals theta. So theta must be 333.4 degrees. Um, now, we can use Pythagoras to give us f. f squared is going to be 5 squared plus 10 squared, therefore f is going to be 11.2 newtons. So I hope that helps.